You know, I felt bad about the last video. I felt like I used the Mean Greens as a platform for jokes. Because that's exactly what I did. No. Because as it turns out, I didn't have a lot to say about Mean Greens. And what things I did like felt way too patronizing. The fact that one of the pros I put down was, can turn brain off to game, felt backhanded. Sure, it is a casual game, but in the vast sea of casual games, free-to-play games, and generally cheap games that go on sale constantly, I think outside of the theming, Mean Greens doesn't have enough to it. I really wanted to like Mean Greens. I love rat maps and I love army men despite how I came across in the last video. But the more I gave the game my undivided attention, the more I felt tricked. Cracker. Before we get into that, let me go over something real quick. A disclaimer, if we will. Usually when I'm talking about a game, it's one that I like for one reason or another. I try and avoid being one of those white noise pricks that rants and raves about, like, Star Wars for four fucking hours. Like, you could watch two good movies in that time and live a more fulfilling life. As a matter of fact, you should turn this video off and go play Risk of Rain 2. That's an amazing game, and a new update for it just came out. My problem with the Mean Greens is that it doesn't even feel janky. It feels like they threw every single idea they had at the wall without really getting the bones of the game right. The weapons feel unsatisfying to use because there's barely any feedback on when you hit something or when you do get hit. I never realized that there were hit indicators in this game until I looked at the edges of the- What the fuck? To make sure I wasn't over-exaggerating, I decided to boot up a free game, Fistful of Frags. I had my buddy shoot me a bunch of- Okay, shoot me from the side now. Yeah, the hit effects are overly dramatic, but you can tell where you're getting shot from because the entire side of that screen lights up, and it's clear when you take a lot of damage because you start seeing double. Taking a shotgun in the Mean Greens... Taking one in Fistful. To take it a step further, I booted up CSGO, because if I know one thing about the CS community is that everything is about readability. Sure as shit, I knew when and where I was getting hit. Indicators are around the crosshair and blood spurts are dramatic enough to know when you're getting hit. And if you don't have any armor on, the game bitch slaps your shit like you owed a 20. And before you do that, oh well it's just a $5 game made by a small team, it's not going to be perfect. I'll preface this with the fact that both of these games are free, and one of them is actively being developed by half that number but really, it is actually just one guy at this point. The devs could easily lift these ideas to make their game better. You don't have to keep reinventing the wheel when such basic shit's been sorted out in video games since the dawn of time. Where you actually need to innovate is the actual game part. I don't know why indie devs have this abhorrence to basic game design. Back to the weapons, another problem is that I have no idea what role any of the guns are supposed to fulfill at this point. The M16 has a massive magazine and a ridiculous amount of ammo to the point that it should just be infinite because you'll never live long enough to see this thing be emptied. It's a rapid fire pea shooter that you can't effectively use for suppressive fire because no one knows when they're being hit, along with being the most unsatisfying way to kill someone. The shotgun, for as bad as its range is, feels powerful enough when you lay someone out with it after one shot. I'm assuming you're supposed to be using it to punish people that get too close to you, but with how the spread works in this game, it's a 50-50 chance if you'll actually kill someone. The sniper rifle is fine, it's my favorite gun in the game. It has the right amount of ammo for it, rewards accuracy as it's the only gun that can get headshots. The only problem is that a lot of people end up using it from spawn because no map is big enough to actually use it effectively. However, the worst of them is the rocket launcher. It's been busted from the start of the game. Originally it had a lot more ammo and the entire game's meta was focused on hiding in a corner until your rocket launcher recharged. Now it only has one rocket in it, and it pretty much guarantees a free kill, since most maps don't give you enough room or options to evade the missile. Really, I'd be fine with the rocket launcher if it was something you had to pick up. Something that your team had to fight to get. Maybe place it in an area that would be fun to fight in, like in the middle of the train. Or in that hell corner of Kitchen Run. Then there's the flamethrower. It punishes range exactly like the shotgun does, never runs out and never needs a reload, and has an easier time doing damage to multiple targets. Granted, you just have to hope the hitboxes actually connect. It also has this really weird feature where everyone's game slows to a crawl when used. I don't really understand the point of it. I think they were trying to implement hit stop. I just don't get how in a game that gets playful with objectives, the gameplay lacks that. You're as fragile as a COD protagonist, with regenerating health to boot, and you barely have any maneuverability options outside of the Dark Souls rolling that doesn't even grant you the luxury of iframes. Every map with the exception of the ones specifically made for Team Deathmatch and Free For All are meat grinders that funnel you into one primary choke point that only has one entrance and exit. It's not that I'm above maps designed to kill you. Toybox Brawl is a fun map. It's a King of the Hill map. It should be a meat grinder. I'm doubling down on what I said about the co-op maps. They're boring and the mobs add nothing. If the focus of the mode was specifically on killing them, I'd be far more forgiving. What's strange is that when you do kill them, it'll make a noise like you scored a point. 
except you don't. So maybe that was the idea, but they just backed out last minute because... I don't know. This map took three years of development time and it's like all the fun got sucked out. Why have us parachute in if we can't land on anything? Why have the bugs if they don't do anything? It feels unfinished. Let's talk about the exceptions to this rule since I forgot to mention them last time. Both of these maps have plenty of space and cover to make firefights interesting. Tabletop Warfare is by far my favorite map to play on because while the setting is kind of mundane with the fact that it's just a war-torn village, the fact that you're fighting in a tabletop game is really cool to me. I'm a big fan of miniatures, so the fact that I can play as a miniature-sized man fighting in a war-torn village is very neat. It also helps that the map is nicely laid out, and can you tell that this part of the script was unscripted? Our table has many areas that overlap each other, and the added verticality helps add to the chaos as enemies could be coming from any direction. It's what I find lacking in the picnic map. They've done a tabletop level before. As a matter of fact, they've done two, and I like them both. I didn't know where to put this, but the aquarium map is just an Unreal Tournament reference right down to the low gravity. The map would play better with tighter air control and maybe wider pathways. I don't know. I don't like this map. My real problem with a lot of these maps is that they feel like they designed the place first and then figured out how to fight in it second. Oh man, fighting in a train would be cool, the developer said. Then they modeled the train and just went, Alright, we'll make this a conquest map and uh, we'll call it a wrap. And then we got the train map. Sometimes it does work out well though, and the garden box map is probably my favorite, and the fact that they made both teams bright contrasting colors against the environment was a great call. Visibility isn't a problem with the map. The problem is that when the map is removed from its dinosaur mode context, you find out that the spawns are shit and that there isn't enough cover to be had. Playing Mean Greens for this long has made me realize why rat maps have that name. It's not just because you're rat sized, it's also because the places you're exploring are styes and you're constantly going into the guts of a place. You're going into walls, through furniture, into people's garbage, the space is a little too lived in, sure, but the props are there to give you cover, and places to hide. When I'm playing Mean Greens I wish I had that same level of freedom to go run into a wall and come out the ceiling, or be able to explore the entire room. The game looks beautiful and I want to see how much detail is crammed into a level, but instead I keep hitting pitfalls or invisible barriers. But it's like the devs are following another rule. Mom's rule of not tearing up the house. Every map in Mean Greens is way too clean. There's no grime, there's no feeling that people actually live in this place. Sure, there's shit scattered everywhere on tabletop, but where's the drinks carelessly placed on the map? Where's the giant Cheetos that I can use as cover from the constant gunfire? Remember that joke that I made about not being able to get into vehicles or taunting? Well, it wasn't a fucking joke when I was experiencing it. I verified the game cache multiple times. I uninstalled and reinstalled the game several more times. I went the extra mile. I went into the guts of the game, found the XML file where the controller configurations are, and manually rebound the key there. Still didn't work and I even plugged in my PS4 controller and it still didn't work. I've even submitted all this to the bug reports section of their Discord with my devices listed and everything and I still haven't heard back after about a month. Considering this bug has been in the game for three years, I genuinely wonder what the actual fuck Virtual Basement has been doing all this time. Are they actively working on ARC? Is that what's taking up their development time? I tried to dig up on who they were as a company from their website and it seems like they're a team that gets outsourced a lot of shit to them. So maybe it's because they're free Lance and that's why the game is being made at a snail's pace, but does it really take four years of development time to add such basic shit? Like knowing when you're on fire, or the ability to have a sound play when you're at low health? Can you actually consider those gameplay choices to actively decide that yeah, withholding basic information and feedback from a player was always intended? There was even a hotfix recently that gave the bots the ability to react to being shot. That didn't ship with them from the get-go? That was something added a week later? Are you kidding me? I bought this game on release and there was promise for the game to become greater than it was currently. The bots in the game took nearly three years of development time and they're so basic that I actually wonder what was going on. The one thing Mean Greens needs more than anything is a refinement of its development pipeline. Because if it actually took three years for this recent patch to be released in the sorry state it's in, the dev team needs to re-examine its priorities.